On today's episode of the Art of Business podcast, we talk to Undivided Band. They were a new band made up of experienced musicians playing what they describe as party music, a mixture of rock, hip hop, country, you name it. Uh, had four guys on the show. Uh, fifth came in for a little bit to talk, um, but a kind of a crowded show gets a little hectic sometimes, um, but it's fun nonetheless and really cool to talk about, you know, how they came together and, you know, what they think about their sound, how they molded their sound and, you know, you kind of got an inside look of a, of a band being formed uh, in front of your eyes. Interesting conversation. Um, we'll also talk about Xenofest happening November 27th, this Sunday, the great Xenofest, an awesome lineup that you don't want to miss out on. We'll have that and more, but first, let's show some love to our title sponsor of today's episode, Quality of Life Services. There are countless reasons why someone might require home care, and knowing exactly what they need can sometimes be confusing and difficult to understand. Quality of Life Services is here to lay your concerns to rest. By engaging with vetted independent caregivers, you can get back to enjoying the time spent with your loved ones without carrying the burden of also being a caretaker. Call Quality of Life Services today for a free consultation, 337-988-0076. That's 337-988-0076. Quality of Life Services. Cherish the past, redefine the present, get excited about your future. All right, let's hit it. are listening to the Art of Business podcast presented by Acadiana Cast, the show that spotlights our diverse local culture and provides business development and resources to enhance our creative economy. Here's your host, Acadiana Cast's very own Carter Simino. Thank you for tuning in to the Art of Business podcast, part of the Acadiana Cast Network. Visit AcadianaCast.com to find more locally sourced content. That's AcadianaCasts, plural, dot com. I'm Carter Simino, and today's episode is presented by Quality of Life Services. Cherish the past, redefine the present, get excited about your future. All right, we are going to talk about Xenofest before we get to our interview with Undivided Bands. You know, I'm sure there's some great music happening around Acadiana this weekend, Thanksgiving weekend. I know the, I think the good dudes are playing at Rock and Bowl, um, but we are, or Grouse Room, one of the two, they play both fr uh, frequently, but we're going to talk exclusively about Xenofest today. Um, it's started back in 2019 as a way to offset the medical costs for Lee Allen Zeno, who was battling cancer at the time, former guest of the Art of Business podcast. Uh, but now it's becoming an annual thing. This is our second one that we're doing. Um, but this this is now a way to kind of highlight some of our great creatives and great culture builders throughout South Louisiana when it comes to music. Um, it's going to just be uh, from 11 to 3 p.m., just an all-star list of heavy hitting musicians, Grammy Award winners, Louisiana Music Hall of Famers, just career long musicians who have been supplying the culture that we love dear and near to our hearts. Uh, mission is $25. Tickets are first come first serve. They do have plate lunches available. Uh, but let me just go through this uh, lineup real quick. Uh, like I said, just uh, an awesome lineup of, of musicians. The Lou Monday House Band will be uh, being kind of the house band for a little bit. Um, but we got all kind of musicians like Steve Adams, another former guest, Marsha Ball, Keith Blair, Ray Boudreau, Tiga Briscoe, the Doopsie Brothers, Gerard Delafosse, Arsene Delay, Grant Dermody, Tony Gula, Gerald Grunig, Sonny Landreth, Sasha Massey, Jill Butler, Ethan Mould, Michael Juan Nunez, Jason Parfait, Pablo Pellerin, Lloyd Richard, Roddy Romero, Sarah Russo, Bo Thomas, Sharona Thomas, Gino Viasio, Ryan Vicknair, Charlie Wooten, Lee Allen Zeno, Major Handy, Janae Stevens. Uh, just an, and, and that's just the people who we have listed. You never know who actually might show up, just much, much like a Blue Monday uh, jam. So an awesome list of uh, $25. You get to see all of those musicians perform. And it's going to be a crowded, fun, fun stage at the ACA. You can go to Katie Center uh, for the arts.org to get your tickets. Um, 
you can also reach uh, reach out to the Love of People nonprofit and get your tickets that way. Like, like I said, it's first come, first serve within the theater at ACA, but think it's going to be it's be an awesome awesome show you know it's important to give people especially our creative musicians their flowers while they're still here and this is a way to do that i mean shoot just to see sunny landreth for 25 dollars, i would do but to see all these musicians together sharing a stage it's going to be absolutely magical so come on down to xeno fest once again november 27th that's this sunday if you're listening to these this episode this week at the acadiana center for the arts in downtown lafayette well, we're about to get to Undivided Band, but first, let's hear from one more sponsor, the Upper Lafayette Economic Development Foundation. They represent local businesses and homeowners working together to develop Upper Lafayette's economy and improve the lives of the people who live here. The ULEDF is a foundation for community progress. They provide support for various community leaders and organizations in order to coordinate efforts to create opportunities for community and economic development. Upper Lafayette will drive economic development through a community support approach. Now, we had John Williams on last week. He talked about quality of life services, Upper Lafayette, love of people. And, you know, that's something that he hammered on that makes ULEDF different from other business networks is it's the community support approach, uh, not just dealing with business owners, but the people and the culture builders within Acadiana that help this area thrive. And just connecting you to all of that uh, makes for a well more well-rounded business and enterprise you can elevate your business by uh, business network rather by attending an Upper Lafayette Business Networking Power Hour every second Monday of the month at Jefferson Street Pub before the monthly Blue Monday Jam. And a lot of times you go to these uh, business networking things that can be a little boring. You get a name tag, you shake some hands, nothing really happens. But this, you know, you get to be a part of the culture and see other like-minded people who are not only wanting to improve their business but the community in which they live. And that's that's ULEDF's calling card right there. Upper Lafayette will thrive. Our businesses will thrive. Our community will thrive. Please visit UpperLafayette.com to learn more. Your support and involvement will make it possible. All right, without further ado, Undivided Band. Hey, yo, Terry. What's up, Jay? You ready to have a good time, man? You know I am. Well, let's show them how we have a good time. Following you? Y'all ready? Let's go. Well, let's have a good time party. That is undivided. Is it band or is it undivided? Undivided band. Undivided, undivided band. Undivided band here with them tonight. Some of the members, uh, fortunately, have four mics. So one of the members got the boot sitting by the producer in the back. That's awesome. Real quick, uh, well, if we're on this side of the of the table, go around and introduce every, y'all, y'all selves. Uh, my name is Kevin Dar, uh, and I'm the bassist. Jared Bridges, I'm one of the vocalists. Jada Wizard, I'm one of the vocalists. And I have a NDJ. question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Carter Simino. Yeah, I'm kind of a big deal. I'm kind of a big deal. That's pretty cool. I, I like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I speak facts and facts only. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what does is, what is Austin play? Austin's rhythm guitar. Rhythm guitar. So, I love y'all's sound. You can go ahead and cut that uh, cut that channel, Hannah. Give a shout out to our other members, too. Yeah, we got, we got yeah. Scott Burdett. He's our lead guitar. He's a and lead another vocalist. little bastard. And as well as a good vocalist. Mm-hmm. Uh, so how many me- how many members in all? Six, six. And we got a uh, Ian Willis, who is n- now our new drummer. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> <laughs> and shout out to our backup drummer, uh, Mr. Kevin Weber. Yeah, he he was our original one, and he had to part ways for reasons, and still happy to have him part of the the group. And that uh, that song's called Best Life. Yeah, Best, Best Life. Life. All right. So uh, do y'all have music that's available to stream yet, or is it just in the in the computer still yes we have music we have uh sun dies which is our first uh, single and we have rodeo and we have gray and old and we have best life is our fourth single that we just released gotcha available on all platforms all platforms go listen to them today very easy uh but you guys have a live show as well you guys are playing tonight this will be released later on but uh you guys are playing at legends and scott is that correct yes yeah so w- how does that that music translate to a live show are you guys using any sort of backing tracks is it just a live drummer like what are y'all what are y'all doing right now it's just all, all live. Live. It's straight just, up band yep straight up band we we uh down the road we we intend to incorporate the click track and the backing tracks for some of the stuff but as it is right now, it's it's raw and it's in your face. We like it. 
I like it. Yeah, it is very much in your face. It's, it does. Does that translate to y'all's live shows as well? Like big energy. Oh yes. yes. Who brings the most energy? Jay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I gotta, I gotta take. As the long as there's back. enough and, room. And Austin is, Austin is like second with the energy. I'm not. <laughs> you're, you're, you're the calm presence on stage. No, no. I, I, uh, I was doing the solo thing for so long, and then. Whenever we got this group together, it's kind of transitioning from being just so low behind a microphone with a guitar to actually having free reign to move. So I'm I'm relearning how to do all that. Yeah, for sure. Now that's something that that I struggle with because you know you just get comfortable just just you and your guitar, and there's not much really you can do. Show it becomes your safe place. Yeah, for sure. And you don't want to move away from that microphone stand. Right. That's the as long as there's enough room on stage for all well five of us across the front to have room to move we'll you I know mean, i'll get out there and do a few things most of the time i wind up in the crowd mm-hmm. just walking around i love that <laughs> <laughs> um so i want to know kind of how this started because jay i met you uh, as jay the wizard yep. and uh funny one of the other podcasts we have i trolled uh dude who hates lsu after the lsu bamming game with your song oh uh, yeah <laughs> yeah it was, it was a great video but so how did how did this relationship get started Oh crap! <laughs> That's a long story. <laughs> you want but, me to take um, this one? Yeah, you can go ahead and take this one. <laughs> well, I was new to the area. I just moved down here. Where are you from? I'm from Zawali, Louisiana. Um, I had a at the time girlfriend sister hit me up and said, "Well, this guy's looking for somebody to do a country song, kind of collab with him." And I was out of music. I was done. And I told her, I said, "I'll give it a listen," but I doubt I even reach out to him. Well, undoubtedly, she reached out to him, and then somehow or another, we ended up getting in contact with each other. He sent me the song, and I loved it. I said, let me listen to it some more, and I'll get back with you. So I agreed. Great song, Sundays. And um, we just started hanging out, went to karaoke one night. Yep. And it just started blossoming. We all got together. Me and him started it, and then all of a sudden, we just started adding one person after another. And we said, let's just make a full blown band. Yeah, it seems like y'all kind of like spread out a little bit as far as where everybody's from. Oh yeah. How, how, did, how did it like start getting members? Like this dude's from Mandeville, my neck of the woods. So, be so, honest, to be honest with you, it's it's a funny story. But uh, when I met Jay, uh, of all places, it was in Diamond Head, Mississippi. Oh really? Yeah, because yeah. I was running sound for Nick Perkins. He's an Elvis tribute artist, and uh, he and and one of his friends showed up to the restaurant we were doing, and we started started talking from there and kind of hit it off at that point he sent me some tracks and i sent him some stuff i was working on and that's when i got involved and then that was a three piece at that point and i was like why don't we just go full on and everybody agreed so we started hiring members and austin over there was first choice for rhythm guitar scott was already kind of in the mix because he did the leads on on sundays and it just kind of blossomed from there now the one problem that we did have is somebody to slap the skins drummers we, we went through i think like four before we found no three before we found kevin mm-hmm. kevin weber and then uh you know unfortunately he's not able to to do what is required of him so now we're with ian willis who's also very very awesome so yeah and and what's that like you know trying to with a lot of like you have you know beats and backing tracks on your songs but to make it to a live performance with a drummer what 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 is that what what is that what are the conversations like you know trying to get your music to sound as close as it can to the recording but in a live setting that's that it's not really about making it sound close to the recording it's okay just, it's just the vibe i like know? It. you know you just got to fill in just kind of like you said the vibe but my biggest thing was vocals because when you go in and do vocals you know all your home harmonies oh yeah then you get there live and you're just like I can't do all these parts. Yeah, you know? throw layers and layers of, of, vo- of vocals on it. Uh, yeah, yeah. That was my only difficult to- part that I seen going from recording to live. So, yeah. so you were you first reached or so you reached out to him to collab on on his song, or or just on a country song. What well, what made you want to get into the, the country scene, being more involved in the rap scene? Well, um, I just felt like there was going to be more longevity in doing other genres Mm -hmm. you know instead of just hip-hop and i didn't want to get like you know categorized and put in a box and i knew i could write music for different genres and stuff and i just never really uh went into those genres and, and tried to do it 
And I came up with that first song, Sundays, and I was like, man, I think I want to do something like this, man. This is cool, bro. And like, I mean, I've been a solo artist for so long, and I've been in like two other cover bands and stuff. But I was like, man, I really love the the camaraderie and being in a band with with other guys and like other people who's passionate about his mu- music as I am. And I mean, I, I was lucky to find these guys and. We made it happen, man. I mean, I still do my my hip hop thing on the side, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, neck neck still doing numbers, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like we just uh, shot uh, the uh, video uh, for uh, it. As, as, as just a little sidebar, when it comes to neck, like, are you watching LSU regularly to see if they're doing well? Oh, to, yeah. <laughs> because the better they do, I feel like the more that song just. Oh hits. yeah, man, man, they was just playing that song when it was losing. <laughs> 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 yeah, just hit over a million it's, streams. What a couple months ago, or yeah. It's just something about being able to say what they say. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, who, who doesn't point. like saying "suck that tiger dick, bitch"? I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, it just rolls well, off the, the tongue. The school, the school gets fined every time they play it. Yeah. yeah, let the band play neck, and so they just play Jada Wizards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so how do you how, how would you categorize y'all's genre of music? Because like, because on Facebook, I, I, at least I saw it just said like hip hop, country, rock, just like slash Fus- slash slash fusion. We're, we're a party band. We're, yeah. we're pioneering this thing because, I mean, regardless of what anybody may think, nobody else is doing what we're doing. Yeah. The sound that we have, it's eff- it sounds effortless. Uh, it, it fits. And you can't really put us in a box with uh, with anybody else. If you really sit down and think about it, we're, we're shooting in the dark right now. But, I mean, it's coming out great, so, so hopefully it'll yeah. be great. So you probably reject the term hiccup? Yes. Uh, There's a couple uh, of them in the know. genre that, or in the in the, the repertoire that you might label as hip hop. But and to be truthful, it, no. any kind of label we really reject because we don't even know what we call it. It's kind of uh, it's music. It's really. music. It's music. <laughs> it's what speaks to us as individuals and as a group. Yeah, and I mean that's basically all you can ask for when you get a group of guys together that love music. As long as it fits everybody and it works for everybody. As long as you're true to it, everybody that listens to it's gonna see that. Yeah, I would just say like Southern Party Band. There you go. Yeah, yeah I like definitely that. a good time band. So, uh, you guys, uh, how often are y'all are y'all playing? Hmm. A lot, <laughs> a lot lately. At yeah. least at uh, least four times a month, and yeah. that's a minimum. I mean, like we have we have a back to back. We have tonight here in Lafayette, and then we have tomorrow night in Dothan, Alabama. Oh wow! Yeah. So how far? What's the farthest y'all have gone? This will be it. Yeah, that'd yeah, be the farthest be. out. I mean, okay. We've done some stuff in, in Houston and Dallas and things like that, but yeah, this would be the farthest from Lafayette. It's, what, seven and a half hours from here? It's yeah. five hours from Mandeville? Yeah, it's pretty far. Yeah. <laughs> how do, with, with people being a little spread out, how does rehearsal work? Oh. Hmm. <laughs> we kind of meet in the middle, you know? Mm-hmm. We, uh, we currently practice at our um, ex-drummer's house. So that's that's funny, <laughs> but it's in the middle. It's we're, in the middle we're looking of for so you know we didn't leave on bad blood. That, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all love. That's the love, brother. It's an hour and a half from here, and it's an hour and ten from Mandeville. So, so. so I imagine like whenever y'all do rehearse, like they have to be somewhat pretty organized, right? So that y'all get the most out of y'all's time. But <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> I said should be. Doesn't mean no, it is. We'd it's be like lying if we say yeah. Practice is at two. We don't start playing until five. Practice right? at two. Everybody rolls in about five. Five. Sounds five. like musicians. We gonna get it together soon, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, man. Especially if y'all are, if y'all are just gonna, starting to get some momentum, getting success, getting getting out and about. Uh, it makes sense to, to tighten up. But uh, like, whenever y'all get together, uh, it's it seems like y'all have a pretty tight sound going into it. That y'all oh, yeah. can just feed off those vibes that y'all were talking about. Well, the truth be told, the man that's pretty much you know responsible for that being tight as far as a whole sound goes, sitting right here, he does all our producing. Well, not all of it. Explain how your role is. Oh, oh, as far as recordings and laying oh, okay, down tracks. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we we have a, another associate. His name is Zach, or AKA Beat Freak. Much yes, love. Much mm-hmm. love to be <clears throat> He'll come up with um with like just a, a basic kind of beat thing and Jay'll start writing some lyrics and stuff over it and then I'll take that and I'll break it down and I'll start adding live instruments to it, like live drum kit, um, get the guys in to record the guitar parts, write create other stuff on top of it. And, you know, once all that's said and done, I pass it through everybody if it's okay, then I send it off to get mixed. 
because you know that's like a rule of thumb you don't you don't uh mix what you track you don't mm. master what you mix kind of thing so but yeah that's that's pretty much my role in it and yeah. i was doing live sound as well is trying to play bass and i consider myself a decent bassist and a decent sound guy but trying to put those two together is just that was a whole different monster love <laughs> yeah it, it was but now we have our, our buddy justin that's going to come in and and he's going to take care of our live sound and i know i can focus on the task at hand which is playing bass for these guys yeah for sure yes Shout out to uh, Justin SD, our new sound guy. Also, shout out to Titan Sound Lab Absolutely. for mixing our songs. So this is the uh, the Art of Business podcast. Um, I try to inject like business acumen into the creative economy. Like if you're an artist of any sort, be it a musician or you know a painter or a movie maker, you want to follow your your passion and all. That's all well and good, but you got to treat it like anything else, a business. Yes. So how does how is the the business of Undivided Band kind of structured? Is it is do y'all have like an LLC? Is it just uh, y'all get, get, we, we, get checks and, and and put it out? To we're everyone? we're, we're, we're barely a year old. Gotcha. So we're we're still working. We're currently on working on getting our LLC as a, as a whole. Mm -hmm. And once we get that established, and we'll just start building from there. But uh, we're just kind of taking it one step at a time. Yeah, you know, we we do have a, a management firm slash booking agency as well. At the moment, uh, MK Music. Nolan and all those guys over there, yeah, they they do help out a lot. So, so what, uh, like, where are y'all in? I guess the the process, like, what are y'all? What's y'all's focus at right now? Right now, our focus is getting that LLC, mm -hmm. um, and just getting everybody where we can actually afford to get it all done. Uh, the, getting everybody understanding what actually is going on with it. You know, just like I said, he's like he said, we're only a year old, barely, and. um now it's just becoming real to us that we're going to have to have all that. Yeah. And um, we're just taking it, like I said, one step at a time and just reaching out, getting a, getting advice from people, you know, recommendations, what we should do. We're just in the building stages of it. Yeah, because you got to see, like, if the concept works first before you kind of invest yourself into it, right? Definitely. Yes. You spend all that money on LLCs and, you know, attorneys and whatever else you need to do. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would say we're all pretty much already self-invested. It's yeah. just, mm -hmm. you know the the next step beyond that like where can we pull these resources to to create something that's going to move forward you know without a lot of effort of us pushing behind it you know like something that's going to pull us with it that's probably the wrong way to explain it but maybe no, you get it it's not really it's just whenever you've been in the business as long as some of us have uh you ran into your share of snakes mm. you ran into your share of people that uh you know, claim that they want the best for you, but they would rather see you fail. And we just all kind of got our guards up, really, when it comes to that. Cause yeah. I know for me personally, I definitely am standoffish when it comes to anything like that. So I've just been getting my personal information and passing it along to Jay. And then whatever he gets, you know, we just, you know, collectively talk about it. And yeah. it looks like we're going to have to make a choice here pretty soon, either way it goes. So. Where do, where do you see this band as far as, you know, live performances go? Like, what kind of venues? Arenas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the, no ceiling. Theatrics. No ceiling. Theatrics. The whole nine yards. We'll, we'll make a... A freaking show. We'll, we'll make the wall down. look like a five, fifth grade play. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's my goal. I like that. We'd like, we'd like to be able to say that we can actually go into any venue... And if you don't have a good time, that's because you didn't want to have a good time. Mm. If we come in and we do our job and we do what we know we can do, there should be nobody complaining. And that's that's what we pride ourselves on. You know, yeah. no, none too big, none too small. That's it. That's we right. can play for the smallest of small crowds, and we can perform for the biggest crowds. I mean, it don't matter to us either way. We're doing what we love to do. That's five, right. either five or five million. It doesn't matter. You're going to play for yeah. whoever's there to We're see. We're going to give it our all, no matter what. So, a topic I've been trying to explore a little bit is the relationship between music venue and artist. And since like everyone here is pretty experienced in playing gigs, playing venues, you know, dealing with venues, what's what's something at least for Louisiana specifically? What's something that can be improved on between the venue and artist relationship? Hmm. Promotion. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah I've got, line. I've gotten that. Uh, Definitely. Also, you know, keeping your word, whatever you say you're gonna do for 
an artist. Uh, I know me personally, I've ran into certain situations, not anything recently, but uh, no, I take that back recently. Uh, if you play somewhere and um, they don't pay you, that's a big, big issue. And uh, believe it or not, there's still venues out there that do pull that stuff. So, Or they'll cut you a check and say, don't cash it for three weeks. <laughs> Yeah, I was yeah. I was talking to Will Wesley and Phil Chandler when they were on, and they were talking about how, you know, a lot of these venues. Well, if, if you're on the move and you're going from town to town that you don't even know this town, a lot of times these venues expect you to bring the audience when you that you don't they don't know you, <laughs> and so the the venue should be the one that is creating a culture of like, hey, live music here. You're bringing the audience. We're bringing in the music, uh, especially at like a smaller level that you guys are at right now. And definitely because we, we don't have a, you know, we're not going to have a big busload of people following us wherever we go. Right. You got to do your own marketing. You got to, you know. Yeah. That's good for that venue. They need to do their homework. <laughs> yeah. We don't have yeah. that. Yet. I'm just saying we don't <laughs> well, have yeah, that. Like especially the the venues that do a door deal. And those yeah. those are kind of tough. I mean, I think the last. So not, explain not explain real quick explain real quick to audience what it, like a door deal is when you a mean door by that. deal is uh, you can play here and the only money you're going to make is what you get from the door. Say if it's ten dollars to get in, how many ever people show up, that's the money that you make, hands down. That's that's all you get. So uh, not the last door deal. We did really well the last time at the Blue Moon Saloon, um, but we did one in in Texas. I'm not going to you know bash anybody over it, but. I think we walked away with $68, and we were all the way in, in, in Spring, Texas, and it was just. And that's all together. Yeah, that's 68 <laughs> total, not yeah. not per person. Damn, that thing, that's like. It that's didn't all, cover gas. So, yeah, right, it's a waste of time. Any of that. Yeah, so, yeah, right. and but they didn't promote it. I mean, they had, mm -hmm. a little, they had a little flyer on the door and all that kind of stuff. So it's and just, I think we made the flyer and sent it to them. Yeah. I think we did. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. And it's like, it's like they don't see like all the stuff that goes on behind the scene and, like, what it what it takes to actually come and put on that show like a lot of people think it's just you just show up and play music no it's not like there's travel there's gas there's rental fees for this and that and just like there's time spent rehearsing time spent rehearsing you know writing songs and, and all just that stuff collab you know basically corralling everybody together and it's showing like, up it's on like time. herding cats yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it really is like herding cats you know people say that it's all no oh, i hate it when i hear this you know, expression, but you don't have a real job. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell y'all something that's listening right now. I've worked in the oil field. I worked there from high school till 2012. I work harder now than I did then. I had two weeks off at that point. Every, you know, I worked six months out of the year there. I work every day, sometimes 24 hours a day just to make, you know, my passion, the reality is work. Yeah. So whoever has that idea in their head, they need to come talk to me for a minute. Yeah, yeah. it's that, uh, what's that song by the, the guy that, you know, we got to move these refrigerators, you know, you know, get your song on MTV, got a little blister on his finger. Yeah, Dire Straits. Yep. Yeah, that's that's not the perception of what it is that we do by any means. Where do you, where do you think that comes from? It's just, it's just like ignorance. I think people just see us up there jumping around and having a good time, and they just jealous. They wish they could do that too and make a living at it. Mm -hmm. But what people don't understand is, you may think that it's all fun and games, but when you, like you said, you got to treat it like a business. You got to take care of your employees. You got to take care of all your overhead. You got to take care of putting money in your pocket yourself so you can pay your bills. It's way stre more stressful than people think, and um, especially as long as we've done this. I mean, that's that's a that's a victory in itself. I've been at it since 99. Yep. I've been in it only since 2012. But, I mean, it's, like Sorry, I said. Sorry, I'm showing my age now. I work <laughs> I work harder now than I did then. My, uh, my uncle, he uh, was a full-time musician for years and years. And when I started gigging, he was like, well, Carter, back in the 80s, I was making $100 a gig. Now, I'm making a hundred dollars a gig. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like the one thing that like inflation hasn't hit is live music. And another thing people don't understand is you only make what you make of it. If that makes sense. As long as your iron's hot, that's when you make your money. If the people are talking about it, if people are listening to your stuff, you can actually charge what you're worth. But whenever you starting off, like you said, hundred bucks, if you're lucky, 
or play for tips somewhere if mm-hmm. you're a solo artist. Yeah. And I mean, you got to strike while it's hot, and that's what we're doing now. Like it, I can tell them, it's like a train. As long as you feed it cold, build up that engine, get that engine running, it'll run for a while. But when you let it die off and cool off, it's hard to get it back up and going. It takes it that much longer to build up steam. Yeah, that really plays into like kind of what you were talking about with you know ju- not just being in hip hop, diversifying yourself, you know, giving yourself yeah. multiple avenues of potential revenue coming in. Exactly, exactly, and that's, that's like that's what our thing we stand for. Like we want to bring people together, no matter what background, what type of music you like, what age, whatever. Yeah, what age, you know, like nothing. We undivided. Nothing you know? separates us from anybody else on earth. We don't care, you, you know, your religion, your ethnicity. Nothing. We don't care. Yeah. As long as you respect us, we respect you. And we love everyone. So Big facts. As long as you don't treat us bad, we treat you just as great. But if you treat us bad. (laughs) (laughs) That's another story. You got got six (laughs) hot-headed sons of bitches running after you. You better look out. Yeah. You you, better check the resume. You gave a shout-out to Blue Moon earlier, but is there any other venues in Louisiana that you think do it right by the artists? Legends. Legends. Yeah, Legends. Yeah, Legends has been good to me. Legends is very good. We've got a... just Nicky's, I mean, they, they do pretty good, for mm-hmm. sure. Just Nicky's, and then you got, I can name up a bunch, being a solo artist. Art and Sphere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Bourbon Hall, New Iberia, uh, Napoleon, where they do open mic night, songwriters night. They're really bringing a different feel to that place. Where's that place where you guys do the uh, the karaoke sing-off thing? Where Where's that at? Ain't that the barrel? That outdoor place? Uh, oh, they closed. Oh, they closed down. Oh. That was traps. Womp womp. Yeah, the traps is closed. I miss that place. Oh yeah, uh, we got we got a shout out <laughs> uh Boudreaux and Thibodeaux though. Have oh yeah, twice. oh yeah, <laughs> Boudreaux and Thibodeaux. Where's that at? That's Baton, Baton Rouge. Rouge. That's the creme de la creme in Baton Rouge. Yep. So I'm told. They're giving us a second shot. The first time we went out there, we kind of botched it a little bit. So we got a, we got another chance on December second. We're going to be there again. Yep, so. that's right. What are some uh, What are some clubs in Acadiana that you want to get into? Do I play uh, the Cowboys? Where's Acadiana? Cowboys, <laughs> Rock and Bull. Um, what else? Yeah, Lafayette, Saint Landry Parish, Iberia Parish, Evangeline, Saint uh, he, Martin. That's these guys' territory. I'm, right. I'm from I'm from the east side of town. Yeah, that place you just telling us about? Huh? That place you were telling me about yesterday that you wanted to get us into? The bathroom? No, not that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I don't even remember. <laughs> we seen it on the way. Or some, um, pl- we were heading somewhere. I can't remember where. I think that's. I think it was Rock and Bowl. No, it wasn't Rock and Bowl. We didn't go downtown. It was some place. I don't know. Well, the sky's the limit. So <laughs> I'm sure y'all y'all hit a bunch of these venues. Um, what's the writing process like? For the three all songs, Ooh. I write in my car. <laughs> <laughs> like, does everyone like kind of bring a piece in? Does one guy say, "Hey, like I've been working on this. Let's flesh it out." I yeah. think there's pretty much a staple that we start with, and then we we branch off from there and see what we can add to it, what we can take away from it to make it more ours collectively amongst mm. everybody in the in the group. So. I just yes. now got back to writing. I had writer's block for years. Yeah, he actually sent me a song not long ago that I'm still working on, putting drums to just to get an idea of a of a demo to to push it out. And yeah, we can build it from there. Uh, I I just I, I just like the dichotomy between like acoustic guitar and like hip hop beats. Like like I, I want, it's like a chicken or the egg situation. Like what comes first? Like what what you what are you layering on on top first? That all depends on what comes first. Yeah. Okay. So it, it could be one of anything. It could be okay. one of anything. Yeah. And it really shows how I guess you could say in depth with talent and skill that's in this group because like I said, we come with a hip hop beat or we can come with a full blown idea from Kevin. I mean, he come up with American. He had all the music done to that without even words. Yep. He said and it, it does happen, and, and that's. I was like, <laughs> whenever he he sent back the video because he just had it played in his car and he videoed himself for the the song American, and um, I called him. I was like, dude, I don't see how you took something so funky and so rock orientated and turned it into a hip hop country twang like that patriotic song. <laughs> <laughs> United States, born and raised, bad ass. That's, that's just, just who, who I, I am. am. <laughs> I was like, "What? Y'all the trying hell? to kick me out?" <laughs> <laughs> no, 
love you. We love you, freaking bro. America. <laughs> Thank God, because <laughs> I'm an American. Uh, so what's the uh, what's the fan base like so far? How are the fans? I like them chunky. Pretty good, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're, they're, <laughs> no, they're they're great, man. They're great so far, man. Like, they're building. It's, it's building as we go. <laughs> they're building. <laughs> That's a positive spin. That's a poor Every. choice of words after that statement. Jerry. Oh, yeah. They're, they're bu- building calories. I, I, I count that after I said it. <laughs> yeah, like, totally. Every, sh- every show we do is like, it's more and more people come out. So, like, yeah, they're, 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 they're scattered. They definitely are. Yeah, they're, they're, we have, we have other right local now, artists that support us. Uh, if there's one or two, they're like, yeah, how you doing? But yeah, the majority of them. They don't say it around us. me. No, they don't, they don't say it. You know, in person, but on social media, like, oh, they jacked my stuff. Yeah. But, you know, that's, be that could, be, you know, yeah. could not be farther from the truth. Jack my stuff? Like, y'all are, <laughs> y'all are bringing all these people to, in together to steal beats? Yeah. Like, right. no, <laughs> like, like we're copying them. Jack my so. style. Like, you had one song. They, like I said, they don't close. say that around me. <laughs> be bad for the dental plan. That's right. <laughs> you guys are appropriating my music. Yeah. I don't know about no, that. But no, we, we may, they may think we're appropriating, but all we're doing is procreating. And all we're doing is being us. Kevin Dart, why don't you tell them about your background? <laughs> no, nah, I don't think I want to. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> we'll, that, that things we want to share? Well, no, I mean, when I good. said I've been at it since 99, um, I, was, I was in a band. I mean, I'd say technically I kind of still am, and I still talk to the guys and stuff, but... Um, I got my first record deal when I was 18 years old. Wow. And uh, we were signed to Wind Up Records, you know, the same one with like, Creed, Evanescence, mm. and Seether, and all those cats. The name of the band was 12 Stones. Um, we were out of Mandeville. I toured uh, about three years straight. Then I was out of the band for a couple of years, got back in, and then back out, back in, back out. It's just hard to raise children over the phone yeah. kind of situation. So, like Jerry was saying earlier, you know, we... We've both been through the ringer, and we're kind of like up in arms, like, you know, what are you trying to sell me? What are you trying to get from me? That kind of thing. But Definitely not looking at it for face value <laughs> whenever you get told something. I'm yeah, definitely there's always a catch. It. There's yeah. always a catch, you know. Definitely. Yeah, that's all. I'm glad to have these two guys in the circle with me. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, just, it's just, uh, it was a wild ride. I'm not going to lie. I mean, been we the was on, on the road for... You know, for two years, pretty much straight. You know, six months on the road, come home for a month, and go back out and do it again. It was uh, it was interesting. I mean, I got to meet a lot of really great people. You know, play some really awesome venues, arenas, and stuff. We opened for Creed for a while. And that was pretty cool. But just the experience that I got from all that stuff, and then the fallout from, you know, the executive side, the fallout from the production side, and all that kind of stuff. So I kind of know what to look for, and just just to be up with the guys, like I maybe not. We'll look into this a little bit deeper and see where we're going to go with that. But definitely a lot longer in the tooth, so to speak, these days. Just where we can we can move forward in a a smart direction and not just put it in somebody else's hands. Yeah, you know, control everything is is to the to the fullest extent that we could possibly have our hands in yeah sure. i mean I, in an ideal world like all if you just focus on music that would be the best thing but you know with you know we're talking about just not be able to trust people and people having their own self-interest and y'all's not at the top of their list you know you kind of and with the, the world of social media and the internet that we have you know the, the responsibility can be taken by the group itself when it comes to like promotions and, and things oh, yeah. like that oh, yeah. what kind of promotions are you like you guys work like doing like videos is that is that your big thing yeah, That's the marketing man, right there. Yeah, I, uh, we we put together like, well, we shoot music videos and stuff, oh, our songs, and then I, like I'll make the flyers for our events and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll get like photo shoots set up. Cause you've been doing that, that. yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, but we're broke, so we're not really able to, you know, put any too much money into advertising. Broke's giving me an upgrade. I know, right? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and also, like, I'll do like Google Ad like uh, promotions and stuff like that. Yeah, I had to borrow money from my wife just to get here today. Well, there you go. You gotta get, gotta get her done. <laughs> Dedication, baby. <laughs> that boy ain't right. <laughs> when I leave here, I gotta go take mine some coffee. <laughs> so just uh, bring her what you got left of yours. 
y'all have any <laughs> y'all y'all have any fun um gig stories as far as interesting crowds or mm. or or lack of crowd there I'm, some of my favorite stories are just like a dude just sitting there's one guy in the audience well there was two people playing for this guy <laughs> played playing for two people in the staff that was that was interesting mm-hmm very that was yeah. That Wait, was um. What was that for this? That was that was in Homa. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Drugs. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think it's important to like. Obviously, it's discouraging when people aren't at your shows, but you can use it as a, a learning experience and ability to get tighter because you only have so many times. Well, you can... have no idea what came out of that show. Oh no, I... <laughs> no, definitely, definitely. And we're not going to get into it, but it no. was it was the probably the most fruitful show that we'd ever played for two people. Is there anything that you can? put out there we're closer okay a lot closer we're a lot closer yeah. now as individuals and as a band yes gotcha Definitely. but it wasn't for at least a week or two <laughs> <laughs> that's facts <laughs> so, i mean that's i mean shoot when you have all these different personalities especially creatives in, in the same room i imagine it can get a little sketchy at times well the thing is he he, he hit on it a minute ago when he'd been put to the ringer like we have it changes you. It changes who you are as a person, as an individual, as a, a father, a husband. Uh, it, it hardens you up. As you a know. brother. Yeah, it can literally make you, I hate to say be a hermit, but you, you really don't want to put yourself out there again like that to have other people just take advantage of you. Mm. And I was at a very, very, very secluded place, I guess you could say, in life. I didn't trust nobody. I was learning to trust people again. But... uh yeah, I was I was having some I had to do some self reflecting big time. And uh as yeah, well as I. That's where basically that's where we were getting at with that. Whenever you can't admit your own flaws and you can't look in the mirror and say, you know, I need to do something about this person, you're never gonna win or succeed in nothing. So that's what I worked on and uh I'll be the first one to admit it. And we're all tighter for it now. So, yeah, we're all closer as a family for sure. Definitely, man. Yeah, so like, that, that's probably the biggest anything with any shows that we've done. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was um, that. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a joke. No, no pun intended. I, no, there no. really isn't anything exciting that. Uh, but there was. I mean, at one time that I was that, singing that lyric in the. Uh, <laughs> What, what song is that? I have seen when Jay with his Jared, shirt off. I saw laughing. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. The times I, I stripped that show. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that either. Pony. Don't do that. Yeah, we don't play that funny. song, Pony. <laughs> bow, 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 bow. And then Jay's up there, you know, shirt Gen- off. Genuine. Hey, it's all good. Magic. He's, he's just mad because they can't strip. Take his <laughs> oh, shirts off. No, oh, I'm, just, I'm mad because there were <laughs> children in the audience. Wait a minute. <laughs> Uh, wait, wait which, which one? Oh, you talking uh, about it then? Yeah, out there at, uh, what's his name? Uh, Wild, Wild Bills. Okay, I forgot the time it slipped my mind. I got, yeah. I got in the zone. Uh-huh. Y'all just can't play that uh-huh. song when they got children there. Uh-huh. <laughs> I wasn't thinking. I'm, I'm looking at a group of like anywhere between five and ten year olds, and they're all doing, <laughs> it's like, Jay, what? Get, uh, get, no. I was focused on the girls. I, I literally got off stage. <laughs> we were playing at, I think it was Legends. Um, Verot, the old legend of Verot. I think so. I was, I got off stage. They wanted to play pony. I said, "Nope, <laughs> not gonna do it." <laughs> I walked off stage and stood at the bottom of the steps. We ended up playing pony, but I sang it from the bottom of the steps. <laughs> sang it from a corner. But, so, but with y'all, y'all's music, y'all are capable. Uh, are y'all capable of playing for both, like a a rated G crowd and a rated R crowd? Yes, if we're careful enough. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. You just got some of us like me that just don't really have a filter. Yeah. And got to catch yourself 90% of the time. I mean, it's not like we have a bunch of profanity between songs. I mean, so the songs that we do for an adult crowd, if there's profanity, we'll do it. But it's not like we're cursing and swearing on stage. And mm. You're not like yeah, we'll, chugging whiskey and chunking bottles into the crowd. We're not that kind of party band. Yeah, we'll, we'll edit it out. Like, I do forgot about Dre and like... It's tough, but I, yeah, you I, go. I, yeah, I, yeah. Forgot about Dre, I, and, I, and I miss the uh, that mother loving part is what gets yeah, me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> mother loving part forgot about Dre. <laughs> yep. Oh, that's that's so funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, like you're saying, like you you want to be a party vibe, but you want you want the people who are there to have a good time and absolutely, y'all not be a bunch of degenerates. 
Honestly. Yeah, well, like like they said earlier, you know, if if you come to one of our shows and you don't have a good time, it's because you don't want to have a good time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, either laugh. We cut up. We yeah. we have a good time. I mean, we we try to do whatever it takes to kill. If it's tension in the room, we're gonna do our best to kind of diffuse it. I mean, it, I've seen shows where it was pretty high strung with tension. Then I've seen shows where people just did not care. Yeah. Now, one of the cool things that we did was in um mississippi not long ago outside of jackson when we did black axes um oh yeah yeah it was just some random people it was like they were just there throwing axes and they wound up staying for the whole show we started playing best life and they they were getting into it and oh stuff, yeah that's where I, was, I got back off stage and started walking around that show yeah oh, that, yeah that was yeah that, that was that was really cool i mean it just just that that energy the vibe that we try to put out there you know somebody's having a bad day and somebody happens to drag that person to a, a venue that we're at Hopefully we will put a smile on their face and get a little, little bump in the run. You know, oh yeah, because you know moving I'm, around. You know I'm always smiling. <laughs> you, you smile I'm in tr- your sleep. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to spread <laughs> he happiness, does. man. <laughs> he does. Every Peace, love, while, and unity. He'll, he'll come and stay a few days at my house. You know, like usually it's a Sunday night, Monday night, but he'll come crash. You'll be sleeping on the couch and just smiling <laughs> while he's sleeping. And you see if I keep my eyes open a little bit. Yeah, sometimes your eyes are open. And he yells in his sleep. You ever notice that? No. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He'll just go, ah! (laughs) You got night terrors? I must have them. I don't know. This is what they told me. (laughs) Vivid dreams. (laughs) But I don't don't know that I dream. The the vividality of it is just He wakes up with a smile on his face like, oh, what a great night. Making a good sleep. (laughs) And they're like, man, you kept me up all night, dude, screaming. <laughs> My son, he sleeps, you know, not too far from the couch where Jay sleeps at. And uh, he's like, is Uncle Jay staying the night tonight? I'm like, yeah. He's like, I'm going to wear my earplugs. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> Jay said, why you didn't tell me? <laughs> oh, no, I told him. <laughs> That's great. Laying there sleeping with his eyes open and a big grin on his face, screaming at whatever. <laughs> Boogie man's killer. <laughs> so y'all's uh, y'all set. How many originals y'all have? Eight, nine. Well, no. Wait. It depends on as far as us as a whole, as the band mm-hmm. itself. Uh, we have eight so far, but we incorporate some originals of Jared's into the set as well, as well as some of Jay's. So, um, I mean, I collectively, I'd say about thirteen, fourteen so far. Yeah, enough for an album's worth for sure yeah, yeah. but as far as like a live set um are, y- are y'all playing like every song that y'all have or are you doing mostly covers how does that we split work? it we split it yeah mm-hmm. yeah well uh depending on how long we have to play we'll do you know like an hour and a half of covers and take a 15 minute break and then go up and do or we just let jared go up and, and do some acoustic stuff yeah most of the time with depending on the venue um, I'll go up and do like an hour, hour and 15 um, acoustic set just to get everybody kind of in the mellow vibe, chill vibe. And then uh, and you rock their face off. <laughs> then we roll right into it. <laughs> just um, I take one song break in between and then I come up on the second one and we get get after it. Yeah, y'all got a, y'all got a bunch of different th- type of things. That, like you, you said, you have you could do the, the acoustic set. Obviously, the, the full band. I'm sh- I imagine there's there's some, some DJing ever. Yeah, I'll be, mm-hmm. be DJing. Like, mm-hmm. Sometimes it closes the night. I mean, that makes y'all more valuable as a group. Yeah. Well, people don't you understand. Get two for one. Yeah, <laughs> you get you get three acts basically for the price of one when we show up. Mm-hmm. And then and then if you want me to perform some extra songs, then that's four four for one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's we can cover any spectrum of music that they want to do. I mean, if you want DJ music, we got that. You want straight rap. We got that. If you want rock, we got that. You, you want, want straight country, <laughs> we got that. I mean, if you want undivided band, you definitely got, got that. that. <laughs> We're a total package deal. I mean, we can show up at any venue for any crowd and please them. Package. Who are some of y'all's uh, musical influences? Oh, I knew you were going to go there. Mm-hmm. Mine would have to be, even though I met him, and he's uh, Travis Tritt. Asshole. <laughs> Garth Brooks. Dwight Yoakam. I haven't met him. Also. Uh, <laughs> I love you, Dwight. And I would have to say Lee Bryce. He was pretty pretty <laughs> cool to me. And I'll leave it at that. Luke Combs a little bit, but he ain't been around long enough for me to really say that. So that's basically it, movie. 
Is everybody right. looking at me? So. You go, it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to say, man, even though I do a lot of like hip hop verses and stuff like that, and uh, like my and my inspiration was Michael Jackson, Prince. Um, Says the man in the pink suit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm trying to think, man. Uh, DMX is one. Freaking um, Lil Wayne, Tupac. Um, I always say he's a modern day Tupac, as far as his lyricism and man, I, just being able to put stories together. Yeah, I, I got so many like influences. Like I, I, I listen to so many different artists that just like speak to me with their music. It, just, it was it. Uh, those the main ones. Was it an adjustment w- when it comes to flow, uh, rapping on different types of music, like a new type of music? For oh, you? so yeah. Uh, so I used to rap fast, like freaking Twisted and Tech Nine and stuff. And Busta then, Rhymes. Yeah, Busta <laughs> Rhymes, and then like once I like started really understanding music more like i was like okay i need to for some stuff i need to slow it down you know and and just kind of feel the song out and you know like i still have my little spots where i like i hit my little tongue twisters and stuff and then i slow it back down you know and uh just arranging it uh but it's not like the D2 super hard you know it's just it's just fun yeah no I just listen to y'all's music and like some, some of your 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 verses and whatnot you know I come from I, I love like country music and I'm always like afraid for it to be tarnished because Nashville has kind of fucked up a good bit of country music country died music. a long yeah. time ago <laughs> yeah yeah it um, died but, before rock died but it's so it's, sometimes you know when I hear I guess the proverbial hiccup I you know, it just sounds kind of corny to me, but y'all, y'all's doesn't sound corny and you're able to Thank in, you. inject all those different types of influences, genres on it. And it, it, it flows and it, it makes sense. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I knew like, I know like some, a lot of people are like feel that way, you know, and they're like, when we tell them what we do, they're kind of like, eh, but like once they hear it, they're like, I don't really listen to this type, this type of music, but I like what y'all are doing, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. And I was listening to it. And I was like, I don't know. I, I don't know if there's something like I put like at the gym while I'm working out, but like I would a thousand percent go to a, a live show. Like it just, it, it just exudes just fun. Awesome. Which, awesome. It's definitely, it's probably the most in, like, I don't know, inspiring group I've ever been a part of. Not only that, but it's just, it's fun. It's excitement. It's, I look forward to our gigs, and I play a lot of shows all year, um, most of the time four nights a week. Mm. But whenever we have shows together, I look forward to those. It's always a good time, fun, just a different vibe in the whole place. So. Yeah, just to show how dedicated he is, he had a show before a show. He missed sound check in the first set, but he still showed up, I'll be damned. And drove four hours to get there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yep. Literally, was the swerving. only complaint that I have about that show is I didn't have time to tell the sound guy that it turned him up in my ears. Yeah, no. yeah. I didn't have him in my ears. I was just it all goes back to making a living, you know. Uh, I got three kids, you know, they depend on me too, and uh, I have a fiance that depends on me, and I gotta provide, I gotta do whatever it takes for me to do it. And music's my passion, and I got brothers that are understanding enough that let me do that like for instance that show before the show uh jay said now go get your money take care of your family so i ain't gonna lie to y'all that drive over there though that sucked <laughs> <laughs> yeah i bet bro. i drove from de ritter to uh homa yep who mm-hmm. made it there in perfect time too do y'all yep. th- do y'all think you know you know you're not like college age or like out of high school like y'all have experienced music on your own do you think those like those experiences that kind of molded you really help this group fit together because i mean y'all have like personal lives and families and and whatnot and so i I feel like that really puts things in perspective for y'all and it allows a cohesive group to exist it definitely opens up your uh your your empathy yeah i mean there's different aspects from that whole thing i mean like jared and i i think yeah, we're the only two in the group 
to have children. Well, Jay's Jay's as well, but yeah, um, just too. as far as like being married yeah. and yeah. Um, being with you know everything mm-hmm. that's going on, it's uh, it creates different size, different shape shells for each individual member, and when you put them all together, it creates one perfect piece. It's like a different pu- you know puzzle piece. I'm you gonna know, give a our, shout out to my fiance too. She uh, Courtney. She, I met, actually met her at the video shoot of Sundays. Oh wow! Yep. And uh, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> She's uh, we've had our differences and we've had our spats, but um, she music is what drew me and her together. Mm-hmm. And uh, sometimes she's she's a little stubborn, but uh, definitely been. You can edit this, right? No, oh, oh yeah. no, do not edit <laughs> this. Do not. He gonna die tonight. <laughs> I'm keeping. I'm keeping this very, very, you very better, PG. Mike, you better. You might want to go ahead and just write your living will and testament. Right? It's already wrote. Oh, okay. Here uh, we go. <laughs> I came prepared. No, she. Uh, well, because y'all, you know, met within music. You know, she understands that it's a big part of you. And well, yes and no. And there comes a time where money and bills can be very much pressure. That's true. And um, but we worked through it, pushed through it, and now we're even stronger today than we were then. But um, just give a shout out to her, Miss Courtney Singley. Shout out. Yeah. Whoop, whoop. Any other shout outs y'all want to give? Uh, I, I got a shout out to my grandmother who raised me. Hey, Grandma. Uh, love you, Grandma. Got a shout out to my, my family and and all my friends that support. You know what I'm saying? And much love to all of y'all. Um, shout out to the rest of the crew rest of the band and everybody that's been helping us make this dream become reality for us love them bastards yeah i'd like to thank god first and foremost yes and then um obviously the the one person that made any of this possible for me is my my beautiful gorgeous wife denise i love you baby shout out uh, shout out to austin back here chilling yeah and i was about to say that go ahead austina austin brokenheimen Mm mm-hmm <clears throat> I didn't say that on the air, did I? Hey, Austin, <laughs> Austin uh, and the rest of the guys. Do you uh, you, you want to jump in here real quick, brother? You, you play rhythm, right? Do you come, come on? Do you, you get my spot? No, I got I got to use the bathroom. Come on. Yeah, you can come you can come around over here. We'll be right back. And so now we're back, joined by Austin, the rhythm guitar player. Uh, you got your mic right here, buddy. Um, what do you uh, do? You play both acoustic and electric. Uh, yeah, and yeah, I do a little bit of both. Um, like on Sundays, I did uh, all the... Oh, I got to lean in? Yeah, a little bit. Cool. <laughs> I, I don't know how to use a microphone. I don't sing. Um, yeah, so like on Sundays, I did I did a lot of that um, on acoustic. Um, uh, rodeo, we do a lot of uh, electric on that. So yeah, I mean, if it has strings, chances are I can kind of play it. And, and uh, I think they kind of touched on it earlier, but how did you get involved with the band? It's actually really funny. So... Um, Kevin had mentioned that he was doing sound for a um, an Elv- uh, Elvis tribute artist, Nick Perkins, and I was driving through Hammond, and I, I heard some Elvis going on, and I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm willing to bet. There's no way. So I pull off to the side of the road. I hop out of the car. I walk over. Um, it was a Spanish restaurant, and lo and behold, that's Nick Perkins, and I see Kevin with his, you know, his beard, his Amish-looking features and stuff and go over there and start talking to him he's like hey man um these guys have this song that they're working on i wanted to know if you could do some guitar on it i'm like cool you know so i go and do that and then uh i guess they liked it i don't know i yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping he's very modest hoping he's a very too. very talented guitar player he is well they nonetheless they're like hey man well you want to be in the band i'm like yeah <laughs> cool <laughs> let's do this uh, that, hey I, it, easy as that right yeah yeah, pretty much. <laughs> what uh, what what are some of your uh, musical influences? Uh, uh, Jada Wizard, uh, Kevin Dar. <laughs> <Jared laughs> <Bridges. laughs> that's that the wrong answer. That's, that's <laughs> love you we too. We want right truthful right answer. <laughs> that's a that's a great answer. <laughs> uh, I'm, I mean, I'm I'm from Seattle, so and I grew up, you know, '90s, early 2000s. So, Alice in Chains, Pearl Jam, Nirvana, Soundgarden. Oh all yeah, pretty stock. Yeah, Jerry Cantrell. If I could ever shake his hand. <laughs> you would never wash it. <laughs> never wash it. <laughs> Kevin knows that too. He's like, God, stop talking about Jerry. But that's a that's a that's a good list. Um, well, we're getting close to, to wrapping up here. Um, I want to play uh, one more song by you guys, uh, but beforehand, I want to kind of talk about it. Um, and 
I actually might need the producer back here to uh, warm that one up. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, all right. So we're going to play, what's what's it called? Gray and Old. Gray and Old. Now, what's the background of this song? Uh, to me, it's going to be the next big wedding song, if you yeah. ask me. I mean, it's got the happy little vibe to it. Uh, Kevin did his thing on it, you know, put it all together very nice. And um has a very good video to it, too. You can check that out on YouTube. But you wrote the, the lyrics to it? The man right there did. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it started just like any other one did. It was like a hip-hop beat that came in first, and then yep. he put his thing to it. And then I eventually, uh, during the production process, I wound up, every time I would record a different part, I would drop a hip-hop side of it. So, I mean, this is pretty much just raw, raw instruments. Yeah. And when, when writing the words, uh, how did you get to what you wrote? He's a hopeless romantic. Yeah, something <laughs> like that. <laughs> It's Seriously, it, ladies, it was. It was <laughs> I, I I wrote the love that I want to find. <laughs> That's what I wrote about, and then it just kind of it speaks a lot of truth too. I it mean, does. If you listen to the first verse alone, uh, it speaks a lot of truth, especially dating this day and age. Uh, too many people want to lie and cheat and play games. That's what he he kind of referenced that in that first verse. So it, it speaks a lot of truth. Um, so before I play it. Uh, to, to play us out here. First off, I appreciate y'all y'all coming on and enjoying the Art of Business appreciate podcast. Thank you. No, we really appreciate you. Hey, man, I, 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 I'm all about supporting local musicians and, and also, like, you know, trying to create a – help do my small role, create a system where people are self-autonomous and can make money doing what they love doing. And uh, y'all are well on y'all's way. Before we, I play the song, each of y'all take a, a moment. I'll start with you and look at your camera and just give a uh, – and you two will have that camera. Uh, but – the uh a message uh to it could be your audience it could be people who listen to you guys potential fans um it could be about you know the advice for up and coming artists um coming into this industry what would be a word or a phrase or a couple sentences of, of what well, you well i mean say? I, I can give advice to anybody that uh is an aspiring musician or even is a struggling musician is just don't give up you know, if the one person doesn't like you and the next person likes you, that's fine. But what you get out of it in the end of it is you can play one song for 100 people. 99 of those people don't bat an eye at it. But that one person that it touches, that's what makes it worthwhile. Absolutely what makes it worthwhile. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Bye -bye. And uh, as far as a tip goes, never pet a burning dog. <laughs> I guess what I would tell anybody is, uh, oh, excuse me. If somebody says it's impossible, it's only impossible for them, not for you. Just keep pushing. Nothing's too big. No goal is too tall. Just literally just keep working. Never stop working and just keep pushing. You will, you can and will achieve your goals. I promise you that. Jay. If I could do it, you can do it. That's basically right. Like, I never give up. You don't have to give up. Don't but I can't rap you. like that, though. Don't tell nobody. Don't let nobody tell you you can't do something. Like that's what I went through all through this career. People telling me no out of a um, hundred no's. Wait, no. Yeah. <laughs> out of a hundred times you brought it to the table, you could get told ninety nine times no, but that one time. Yeah, that one time yes. may be your opportunity that you need. You know, so just keep pushing and stay humble. Uh, don't forget where you came from. Yeah, don't forget no, where you came from. Like, treat people with the way you want to be treated. Like, don't disrespect people for no reason. Just because you get to a certain level and you think, like, don't ever think you're better than nobody. Always be true to yourself. Yes. As long as you do that, you ain't got nothing to worry about. That's right. Amen to that. Love it, gentlemen. Well, one more time, this is Undivided Band, Gray and Old. Even when we're gray and old, I'm still gonna love you the same. Nothing can put out the flame. No, even when we're gray and old, together through every pain, that's not ever gonna yeah. change. No, even when we're gray yeah. and old, I was such a 
it for a long time Trying to find a person in my dreams I could call mine I had so many of them blowing up my phone line But really ain't none of them compared to the one in mine uh, It seems true love was obsolete Cause nowadays everybody wanna lie and cheat But I'm Well, that's it for this week's episode. Uh, once again, I can't preview anybody for next week because it's that time of year where people get a little busy with the holidays. You got kids at home. You know, you're hanging out with friends and family, maybe picking up a few extra gigs so you can get an extra special Christmas or holiday present for your loved one or that special someone in your life. Um, but we definitely will have an episode next week. Might have one of my family members or two of my family members uh, to talk. Uh, we also, I know, uh, working on getting Zach Edwards on the show. I saw him at Miles Meagle's uh, Songwriters Night at Grouse Room a few weeks ago. And he dude's got a killer voice. Him and his band The Medicine uh, have a new EP out. You can get it on Spotify, Apple, wherever you get music. But uh, really looking forward to talking to him. I really love his vibe, his music, and I think it's going to make for a great conversation. I think he wants to bring his producer as well, or business manager, and so we'll get a lot of the the business, the, the the music side, but that's coming up within the next couple of weeks, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, please rate and subscribe to the podcast on whatever service you use to listen. can't tell you how important it is to have people who enjoy the show to actually like it and subscribe, leave comments, leave all that. It really helps for the algorithm, uh, driving tra tra traffic, which will allow me to get bigger and better guests not that our guests previously are not good <laughs> but you know just to keep this thing this train rolling and to bring in the type of content that you deserve uh, I really appreciate anybody who does listen and, and help me out just by that simple little like or on, or on YouTube the subscribe button goes a long way um, also make sure to follow Acadiana cast our our podcast network on social media to help the network continue to grow we're on Facebook TikTok, Instagram I think we have a uh, Twitter but I haven't really dug into that started using that uh, i know we're on linkedin as well uh, a lot of big plans for 2023 and you know we're just getting started but it helps to have you guys follow and like this and and gassing up our videos as we continue to post each and every week uh, allowing us to continue to grow if you want to be a sponsor you want to be a guest you have ideas for the show please reach out to me info at acadianacast.com shoot me an email once again info at acadianacast.com once again, all these things allow for the show, the network to grow, and that's all we're trying to do here is just bring you the best content each and every week from right here in Acadiana. Thank you once again to all of our sponsors, the Upper Lafayette Economic Development Foundation, plus today's title sponsor, Quality of Life Services. Cherish the past, redefine the present, get excited about your future. I'm Carter Simino. Until next time, stay funky, y'all. This podcast is powered by the Acadiana Cast Network. Go to AcadianaCast.com for more South Louisiana sourced content.